And we're live with the Cat Cannabis Show here on New Earth Television. Welcome to the Cat Cannabis Show, everyone, on New Earth TV. And I'm your host, Cat Cannabis, and author of the Amazon number one bestseller in new releases, Dreams That Can Save Your Life, written with Dr. Larry Burke. And you can learn more about that by going to our Facebook page by the same name, Dreams That Can Save Your Life. So how often do you wake up in 5D? I know. When I first heard that, I was like, uh, I don't know. Well, we have our guest today is going to be talking about that. And Maureen St. Germain is a modern day mystic who has become world famous for her training in personal development and spiritual awakening in more than two dozen countries. And she's the author of three best-selling books. She is the founder of Transformational Enterprises and the Akashic Record Guides International. She's living herself in 5D and above because she says there are actually 12 dimensions. So without further ado, let's bring her on and talk about all of this. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Kat. So but Maureen, you talk about um, how we need to be uh, waking up or we are waking up in 5D. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, most people think of themselves as being in third dimension and 5D is obviously fifth dimension. So what I would use to describe 5D is it's the equivalent of what all of our traditional churches or organizations have taught us is heaven. So we're in a place of gratitude and connection. We're in a place of appreciation. We can be uh, in a place of joy and co-creation. And what I discovered is that we are all waking up in 5D a lot. And I have lots of ways to prove it. Um, so, Please do. Like, what do you mean by we're waking up in 5D? How, how, if I were to wake up in 5D tomorrow morning, how would I know it versus 3D where I could just kind of reach out and touch something? Well, what happens is as you sit up in your bed uh, and you start to get up, you think, wow, I feel pretty good. I didn't think I was going to feel this good when I woke up. So you're actually feeling good. Then the next thing that happens is that if you live with someone or you talk to someone on the phone after you get up, you're in a place of joy. You're in a place of humor. So something gets said to you and you make a joke out of it instead of, um, a, you know, a disappointment. So whether it's, uh, you know, a comment that's like a downturning comment or an upturning comment, your response is, is fun or funny. And whether you're living with someone or you're on the phone with someone, it's almost surprising. And even sometimes you're surprised to yourself, wow, that was pretty funny. I didn't know I was that funny this early. So yes. those are the kinds of things that happen. And then there's re like really physical, tangible proof. And the tangible proof is when you put something down and it could be something as simple as, let's say your massager, you know, your little toy and you put it away in the drawer and then you think later, oh, I'm going to use that again. So you go to pull it out and it's not there. And you think, well, where did it go? I just put it there. I, I'm not tired. I didn't forget. It should be there. So <clears throat> you give up on it. You go do something else. Then a day or two later, you're in the same spot, and there it is, exactly where you left it. Now, I used to ask, who took my stuff? <laughs> well, where did my stuff go? Because when you look at four teenagers, right? I, my teenagers are grown now, but, you know, when you have a house full of people, you can assume that, you know, the kids walked off with the scissors or whatever. So one day, though, I asked, what's going on? And instead of the location or the who, I was told, Maureen, you were in a higher dimension when you put it down. So when we go looking for it, we're now dropping back because we're kind of urge, you know, urgent or in a frantic place if you're looking for sunglasses or something like that. And when you move to the higher dimension where you're relaxed and comfortable, then it's easily visible to you. So the vibrational data set that we're moving uh, between, it's us opening up to that different vibration. I'll give you another example. A very good friend of mine, a very powerful spiritual teacher in her own right told me that she had a beautiful emerald ring and she came home tired one day and she, she dropped it in her dresser door because um, she didn't want to leave it out. 
And the next day she went to look for it. It wasn't there. She looked for it for three months and, and couldn't find it. Finally gave up, quit looking for it, quit being anxious about it, right? And the next time she opened that dresser door, there it was. That has happened to me. I mean, if I didn't know that that has happened to me, I would say, well, this woman, you know, has gone blind. But no, that has happened. And it happens sometimes really fast. Like you'll have a pen. I have a special pen that I, I just love to do stuff with. It's a fountain pen. And I will put it down and go, I'm putting this right here because I, you know, I'm, I might be in a place where I feel like I am losing stuff and I'll say, okay, I'm going to put it right here. Do you see you putting it there? Yes. I see me putting it there and I'll do something else on my computer and I'll answer the phone. I'll come back and it's gone and I'll go, okay, Kathy, are you losing your mind? How can you do that? How can you lose it in five seconds when you haven't even moved? And then I'll turn back around and look and there it is. So I know exactly what you're talking about. So one of the easy ways, and you're easily slipping back and forth because you, you know, of who you are. Um, but for the person who's just listening, going, "Well, what the heck? How do I get my stuff back?" Um, you can actually announce, "I'd like to get my stuff back," and and you have that mental, "Okay, it's coming back," so you're not so quite so worked up over it. And then another way to do it is just drop into your heart and just you know move into that loving space that space you have when you open your heart, you know, when you hold a pet or when you hold an infant, that is yummy, you know, that yummy, sweet space. And then it'll be right there in front of you. So when it, uh, is, this, is this what you were talking about? Um, was that how to blend or stretch time to operate outside of the rules? Is that a little bit of what you're, you're touching on here? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. When we're slipping between the dimensions, we are... Um, most certainly capable of blending time. But the, the, the thing that happens is what I will call an inadvertent moving from three to five. And that's one of the things that was like a discovery for me because I initially thought, like a lot of people did, that we're going to go to five and stay there. And what I learned is that, no, it's more like teenagers. You know, first you do something mature, then you do something stupid. So, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so that's us, you know, you know, sometimes we're in this wonderful yummy heart place and the next minute we're, we're annoyed with our spouse or our partner because they, they didn't do something the way we wanted it done. So that's, that's one thing. Now, when we're manipulating time, what's happening is we're literally slipping out of the time matrix that our reality has adopted. And we can use our knowledge that it is a construct that sits over us like an umbrella. So all we're doing is closing the umbrella temporarily and stepping out of that matrix and then stepping back in. And that's a very conscious thing. And, and that can be done by individuals who are self-empowered in their place of power. And that's why I was uh, so determined to put words of power in the book to help people understand that they disempower themselves when they use polarity-based words and they reclaim their power when they use powerful words. And I'll give you a real simple example. How often do we say, I have to? I have to pick up the kids at daycare. I have to meet my husband for dinner. I have to get this report done. I have to meet these people. And all those have tos puts the power outside of us. But when we say, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting my husband, I need to leave now. Or I'm gonna pick up the kids, they love it when I'm on time. You're literally claiming that you are the power. And then when you choose to step out of the time matrix, you are announcing, I know what the system is, and I'm stepping out of it. And I'm choosing to land where I need to. And so a lot of people have been able to do this spontaneously by intention. And I have a lot of my clients, for example, who are able to now announce they want to arrive at a destination at a certain point in time, and they... Um, they're aware that the time that they usually need to get it is not like visible to them, then they unhook from time. That means they don't turn on the radio. They don't look at their watch or their phone. And in fact, I tell people, stop wearing your watch so you don't, you're not attracted to it or attempted to look at it. You know, put on some kind of music that's on a string that you wouldn't know how much time has passed so that you can step out of that matrix because anything you do that pulls the matrix back in, like a radio or you know a certain series of CDs, will then lock you back into the time matrix because everybody knows that CD is 30 minutes or whatever it is, you see? Mm -hmm. So it's a purposeful stepping out of the matrix 
with your intention and your clear outcome and you see yourself arriving at, you know, in plenty of time, you walk in and it is amazing how fabulous that is. Uh, that, that was a great explanation. So do you have a copy of your book with you by any chance that you could hold up? With, because I think the cover's beautiful, just Thank beautiful. You. Waking Thank up in 5D, a practical guide to multidimensional transformation. Do you know how hard it was getting that on the poster to send it around because it was so long? But it's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful title. And Thank where you. can we find that book, Maureen? How can we get it? Barnes & Noble, Amazon, my website, Inner Traditions website, just about anywhere. Yeah, and in fact, I'm excited to announce that we were voted the best-selling book in America by independent retailers, not the big box stores, but the independent retailers, and it was featured in Retailing Insight. Wonderful. So, very that exciting. Is, yes, very it exciting. really, really is. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show with us tonight, Maureen, and uh, to all of our listeners, you have been listening to the Cat Cannabis Show. Join us next Tuesday, same time, same place, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 Eastern Standard Time for more great stories. And these shows, including Maureen's, will be showcased and archived on the Cat Cannabis Show on Facebook. You can go there to click the link to go to any of the websites. Thank you again for being with us. I look forward to seeing everybody next Tuesday. Thank you, Maureen. A day of heaven on earth for you and everyone.